Hi, we'd like to thank you for joining us today and we will be discussing the day of surgery and what happens to you while you're here in the hospital. I'm Tara. And I'm Ann. And we are nurses here on the fourth floor at Wesley Long. And we'd like to remind you that what we talk about today is mainly guidelines. Your physician may tell you something a little bit different, so um, you will listen to that. So a lot of people want to know how long does my surgery take? And generally it takes about two to three hours once you're back into the surgery suite and then maybe another hour or two in the recovery room. So in all, it might take around four to five hours. Um, when you get here, you'll be taken into the pre-op area where they will start your IV, um, your family can be there with you, and then they will take you back to the surgery suite. Um, at this point, they will um, put your catheter in, and yes, you are asleep when they put your <laughs> catheter in, so that's good. They will also um, shave your belly at that time. Now, for, as far as positioning goes for surgery, it's real important um, to know that you will be positioned kind of on your head. So your head will be here and your legs are kind of elevated. When you get up the first time um, upstairs, you may feel a little dizzy. And that's just because you were in that head down position. So just remember that, that it's completely normal. Also, your arms may be kind of bound beside you. And um, so when you get back upstairs, you might have a little numbness or tingling in your hands or your arms. And again, that is very normal. Your legs are actually up in stirrups, kind of like a woman having a baby. <laughs> so um, after surgery, you may have a little bit of pain in your hips or your knee area, but that will quickly go away. At that point, once you have your surgery, you go to the recovery room, then you're reunited with your loved ones up on the fourth floor here at Wesley. We do want you to know they are all private rooms. Uh, they do have day beds in case you would like to spend the night, your family would like to spend the night, and um, don't feel like you have to, but you are allowed to do that. So now Ann will discuss equipment and some of the routines that happen on our department. People want to know what they're going to look like when they come back from surgery. Of course, the main um, piece of equipment you'll have is the Foley catheter. Mm -hmm. um, you'll have that. And the urine can be any color under the rainbow. Um, it can be yellow, it can be bloody, and that's okay. Um, if you look down really quick, it's going to be a blue-green color, and that's because they've put a dye in your veins to make sure where they've sewn you back together mm -hmm. inside, there's not a leak there. Um, You'll also have um, an IV catheter, and that's going to give you fluids to hydrate you mm -hmm. overnight. Um, and of course, we're going to take that out when you get home, uh, before you go home. You'll also have um, a JP okay. drain, which is a bulb suction um, that's sutured in the left side of your body, and it wicks away excess blood and fluid mm -hmm. that forms underneath those incisions. Um, it only has just a little bit of uh, fluid in the bottom of that bulb. Um, the nurses will empty that every four hours mm -hmm. um, while you're here, um, and then we take that out the next morning before you go home. Um, some other equipment you'll also have when you come back from the operating room, you'll have the white stockings, those TED hose on. These prevent blood clots, so you'll have those from the knee down. You also will have uh, compression wraps mm -hmm. that wrap around each leg, um, and they squeeze each leg alternating, um, and that forces blood back to your heart, um, prevents blood clots also. Um, you'll have oxygen in your nose, and usually we take that off quickly when your oxygen levels rise right after surgery. Diet after surgery, typically our patients are on clear liquid diet, um, but some of the other doctors are um, progressing diets a little bit sooner, so my best recommendation is to ask your nurse or doctor, um, mm -hmm. what, am I, what is my diet after surgery? Um, some of the routines that we do in the hospital, we wanna let you know about that. We're gonna take intake and output, um, usually every eight hours. The nurses or nurse techs will ask you what you've had to eat or drink, and we put mm -hmm. those fluid balances in the computer, um, along with what we empty out of the catheters or drains. Um, so we keep up with your fluids that way. We also take your vital signs every four hours. Yes, we do wake you mm -hmm. up at night, not to torture you, but just to make sure that you're doing okay and are stable. After surgery, it's important to take those good deep breaths and the incentive spirometer really helps us accomplish that. Mm -hmm. The nurse in the room will set the goal for you for that day. So we've set this one about um, 2000 and you'll want to keep this little blue button in between these arrows. 
Can you demonstrate it for us, Tara? I sure can. All right, so the object is to inhale, not to exhale. So I'm gonna blow all my air out. <laughs> Good job. Thank you. Now you're gonna to wanna to keep this on your bedside table and just do it five to 10 times every hour while you're awake. Um, it's important to just take those good deep breaths using that. Mm -hmm. After surgery, you're going to have five incisions. We use the skin glue or dermabond to close those incis incisions. The largest um, incision is usually at the belly button, and that's the um, hole that the prostate comes mm -hmm. out of. They actually put it in a Ziploc baggie and bring that bag out of that hole, so it mm -hmm. has to be large enough to accommodate that. Um, you could consider we have six incision sites when we pull out the JP drain, actually leaves one. So while you're in the hospital, we're gonna make sure um, that activity is really important. You need to be up and walking. And the motto on the fourth floor is to walk, walk, walk. 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 We really want you up and moving at least two times a day, the day of surgery. And then the next day we'll have you walking at least four to six times. Now, a lot of people wanna know what kind of pain or discomfort am I gonna feel while I'm here in the hospital. Um, one thing you will feel is more pain on the right side. They do a stitch that's a little bit deeper, so people do experience that. So we just want you to be ready that that is common. Um, catheter pressure while you're here, you really, when you come back, you feel like you need to use the bathroom. And that will um, kind of go down as time goes. It will get less and less. Um, you also have some rectal pressure. Just remember um, where the prostate is in relation to your rectum. So it makes you feel like you need to have a bowel movement. So um, you will have that kind of pressure. Bloating is a very common thing. Also, that's going to happen just because when you are positioned in that position with your head down position, they do put some gas in your stomach that kind of um, makes it blow up a little bit in mm -hmm. there, for lack of a better term, so that you, they can see the organs a little bit better and see your prostate. And while you're in the hospital, you will get IV pain medication the night of surgery if you need it. And then the next day we will move you over to oral medications just to see how you do before you go home. The majority of people do go home the very next day, even if you are the late surgery um, on a day, you still will go home the next day. And the routine that normally happens is the physician comes around in the morning, they come see how you're doing, they'll um, disconnect you from the IV fluids. We will take out the JP drain, as Ann said, um, and then you'll again be on those clear liquids. And we'll see how you do throughout the day. We'll get you up, we'll have you walk in, and then the nurse practitioner comes in that afternoon. She looks at you, says how good you're doing, and then you get to go home usually early afternoon. Tara, can I ask you some questions we normally hear? Sure. Okay. Can I shave my own belly? No, we do not recommend that you shave your own belly just because that you might have a nick or something and that could open you up to where you could get some infection. So our staff will definitely do all the belly shaving that goes on. Okay. <laughs> when do I part ways with my family? Again, they will take you back to the surgical suite, like where they put your IV in and stuff, and you'll get to have your family in there with you. Then at that point, they will dismiss your family. They'll go into the waiting area. They'll actually give your family a number so they can follow on a screen to kind of see where you're at, if you're in surgery, if you're in the recovery room or wherever. And they'll also give them a beeper so that they can go to the cafeteria or go wherever mm -hmm. they need to in the hospital. And then when the surgery is completed, then the beeper will go off and you can come back and speak with the physician. Okay. Should I take pain medicine every four hours? We recommend that you take pain medicine when you need it every four hours. So in other words, we want you to get up and walk. Um, so if that requires you take pain medicine to get up and walk, absolutely. Mm -hmm. But you just don't need to take pain medicine just for the sake of taking it. Okay. How soon do I start walking? We will get you up walking usually within two to three hours of surgery. So it's pretty quick. Um, the first time we'll do it kind of easy. You may sit on the side of the bed, maybe stand, because again, you may feel a little dizziness, but after that point, we'll get you up and walk every few hours. Okay. Can I do too much? You can do too much. Um, we generally tell people to get up and walk just a little ways. If you, let's say you got up and you walked and you walked around the halls about three times and then you got so tired that you couldn't mm -hmm. walk next time. Well, we would rather you get up, walk, short distances and do it more often. Okay, and can I walk by myself or do I have to wait for someone? 
the first few times we want to make sure someone's with you um, because you'll have your IV tubing, you're going to have your um, plugs going in, your catheter and all that. So we want to walk with you the first few. But after that, we'll tell you, hey, you can start walking on your own or with your loved one. Okay. Again, we would like to thank you and we hope you got um, some information out of this. Um, you can reach us if you have any further questions at 336 832-0314 and just remember we're not there all the time so it may take a couple days to respond. You can also reach us at prostateclass at conehealth.com. Now we'd like to um, encourage you to watch the next video in this series and we'll be talking about your home care.